Okay, so today's studio vlog, we are going to be making the very last Rafe necklace ever. I recently had the last launch of the Rafe necklaces and I sold out of them in 15 minutes, which was really exciting. I won't be making it anymore because it was a limited edition. So whenever I cast the other batch of the gold Rafe necklaces, only one of them didn't form all the way. And I think I didn't have my gold hot enough. So a lot of it got left in the crucible. So I'm gonna be casting that one on its own today with another ring, a custom ring and I think I'm just gonna have to make the temperature of the metal hotter this time. Casting is still new to me. I think this is probably gonna be my sixth or seventh time. I am starting to catch on. Silver, I feel like I have down pat. Gold has been a little bit trickier, but again, I think through trial and error, I figured out that I just didn't have the gold hot enough to pour. We're gonna make the gold wraith necklace a custom ring, which I'm really excited about. It was someone's great, great grandma's ring. It was one of those like, uh, those portrait things. I don't remember what they're called. Hang on, let me grab it, I'll show you. I always forget what these styles are called. Okay, so I just looked up what it was called. It's called a cameo necklace. Well, this one was a ring, but I feel like I've seen them more in necklaces. So this is the cameo, I don't know if it's a stone. Anyway, it was in her great grandma's ring and it's beautiful and it's very old and delicate. It's so old that it's worn down, so all you can see is the profile of the face and the hair. So I'm gonna use 10 karat gold, which is what it was originally, and create a new setting for this ring. We will also be pouring the investment to get ready to cast, and if I end up casting tonight, then I also will include it in today's video. I can already tell that I'm gonna end up needing a mic on my chest for this because it is winter time here in Idaho. It's 13 degrees outside and this pellet stove is really, really nice, but it's also really loud. So I think that's going to be the next thing. So I hope that the sound is okay on this video. I forgot to mention the ship lap is up in the background. Tom and I the other day spent an entire day doing this half of the room. I still need to caulk the seams and hang trim, trim out the windows and stuff, but that's going to be at a way later date. But I'll just give you a little spin of this half of the room. One thing that I've learned through making jewelry with wax is that it can be so tempting to just cover your stone in wax, like cover in the sense where the wax is holding your stone into your piece. It's okay to do that whenever you're working with claw settings, but when you're doing a flush setting so the stone is gonna be covered in metal all the way around, you really, really, really wanna make sure that you are cutting back the wax from that setting, unless you're gonna cast your stone in place, which I've never done. I wanna try, but I've never done it. Unless you're casting your stone in place, you wanna make sure that you can easily take your stone out and put it back in. So before you cast your piece, make sure that you can easily put your stone in without having to force it or wiggle it because your wax will give when you pull your stone out, but your metal won't. It also give when you put your stone in, but your metal won't. When you cast your piece, you're gonna be sitting there drilling and drilling and drilling, trying to dig out enough metal to get your stone in, and you're gonna wear down your burrs, waste time, and any wax that you get away from your stone is, would end up, how do I say this? Any excess wax that you remove before casting would have been excess metal, which would have cost you money. So make sure that you carve away any wax that's going over your stone. And if you plan on doing a flush setting, just build your wax up in height, not over your stone. It is okay to do that if you're trying to do like a decorative, it only passes over your stone in certain areas. That's okay because you can like wiggle your stone in, but do not do that all the way around because you will deeply regret it and it will waste a lot of your time. So I don't know if you can see, obviously I'm not anywhere near done with this, but the wax is over the stone right now and if I were to cast it 
like that, I would never get that stone back in because I'd have to take that out. So I am taking my X-Acto knife and I'm carving it away so that, I mean, if I turn this upside down, I want the I want the stone to come out. And then I'm gonna build up my bezel in height and that way when I cast, I just put my stone in and I push my metal down over and it just makes it so much faster. I wasted a lot of time and a lot of materials in the beginning trying to... I guess be lazy although I didn't know I was being lazy in the moment I was just trying to make like a, a decorative choice but it just ended up wasting a lot of my time so take the time to carve it away and then build it back up So I just finished the necklace and now we're gonna start on the ring. I don't have a before picture of this ring. In my head, I know what I'm gonna do. I haven't drawn it. I have gotten that question about like my process of designing jewelry and stuff and if I draw, I cannot draw to save my life. Everything that I make is just in my head and then I just do it. Sometimes when I'm making custom pieces, I have no sense of direction whatsoever and I just start and then it just comes out. I don't know how to explain it, but that's kind of what we're gonna do today. I do have what I want it to look like in my head. I just need to start so that I can see if I can recreate what I'm thinking. I was thinking about doing a claw setting on this ring, but I don't wanna cover up the cameo. I don't wanna cover up the face of it, but then doing a flush setting is a little bit scary because I use a hammer hand piece to push the metal over the jewelry and I'm really worried about cracking this. So claw setting would be the safest bet, but I just don't wanna cover up the lady. So I might just create some claws in wax and just see how it looks. And then if I don't like it, I'll just cut the claws off and make it into a bezel setting. But let's just start laying.
timer ready for eight minutes. Once I add the investment into the water, I have eight minutes to mix before it starts to set. So one, two, three, go. Since the flask has been vacuumed, all the air bubbles have been vacuumed out. This has to sit for about two hours to get nice and cured before I can put it in the furnace and melt out the wax. When the wax melts out of the investment, it'll leave a negative image that I can then pour the metal in. I think I'm going to time this so that I can cast tonight while everyone's asleep. And I'll try and get some clips in of me casting tonight so you can see what this looks like. I will try and get those clips for you so you can see how these pieces turn out. And and yeah, I think I'm gonna end today's studio vlog here and I will film myself setting those stones so that you can see what they look like for the next vlog. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys. Let's get casting. Ooh, I think this worked, Isaac. Be I careful over here. I just need to do a quick thing. I'll take like 30 seconds. Wait, look at this. Hey, wait, don't, don't touch anything, but like, do you wanna look inside? Uh-huh. You see the metal? Oh yeah, it's red. It's something about the Xbox. Okay, what's wrong with the Xbox?